well, not to belabor the point, but um, I think that, as I said yesterday, um, the conference call is really pleased with the way our team played in the second half of the game. A lot of things that we didn't execute very well in the first half, and uh, those things are all correctable things that we want to address today with the players and try to clean up so that uh, we don't have those issues in the future. So, you know, we're really excited about Cam Robinson having one of the SEC Offensive Linemen of the Week. You have our Players of the Week, you know, from last week. Um, but this game is really where our focus is. It's the SEC Championship game, which is one of the most competitive, um, you know, sort of environments that I've actually had the opportunity to play in uh, against a very good Florida team. Uh, who has great tradition and history. Uh, both of the teams in this game have tradition and history in this game. So, uh, and this is the 25th championship game. And as I said yesterday, you know, to have Coach Spurrier and Coach Stallings there uh, who played in the first championship game uh, is really <coughs> sort of something special. But uh, I think Florida, you know, Coach McElwain, Jim, has done a really good job uh, in his time there. Uh, they've gotten better and better each year. and. Um, certainly won games this year that they needed to win so that they'd have this opportunity and uh, they have a great defensive team, one of the best defensive teams in the country, a very good man to man team in the back end, very dominant front seven in terms of their down guys up front, ability to rush, play on the line of scrimmage. Um, offensively, uh, they've tried to create great balance with their team this year and ability to run the ball and uh, they had a couple backs that have both contributed to that but uh, I think uh, Antonio Callaway and Brandon Powell, uh, the two receivers that they have, are certainly guys that they want to get the ball to that have ability to make explosive plays. And uh, when they've been able to do that, they've been very effective on offense. Um, always very good on special teams. They have really good specialists, whether it's returners, punter, kicker. Uh, they're all very effective and very good. So it's a very challenging game for us. We'll start here in the second row with John Zener. I had two questions if I could. One, uh, Damian Harris said after the game that if anybody says Alabama could afford to win this game, they just hadn't played, I mean, lose this game, they hadn't played sports. Do you expect, it's a big game obviously, but do you also expect kind of competitive fire that you can't let, that won't let that mindset creep in? Well, that's certainly not the mindset that we want. I mean, um, you know, this is a big game for us. It's an opportunity to win the SEC championship. Um, you know, which to me is a very, very significant accomplishment. Um, and we, we hold that in very high esteem, having the ability to do that, having the opportunity to do it, uh, having the ability to play for it. Uh, and the, to think that, I mean, you all put everything about the playoffs, man. That's all you care about. You don't care about any bowl games. You don't care about any teams in the country that aren't in the playoffs. I don't, you know, I don't know if we don't win this game. Maybe we throw a stink bomb out there. Maybe we don't get the playoffs. Uh, I don't know. You, you guys got all the answers to all that, but I don't. I, all I know is if we play and we play well, we control our own destiny in terms of what we do. So I'd really rather not have any more questions about, is it okay to lose this game? It's never okay to lose a game. And I, I wanted to ask about Jalen. He's, 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 he's done. You should have asked that first. <laughs> How much of he's, we obviously know he's done a lot of great things this year, but how much how dedicated he is he kind of to improving every week and learning from negative plays and everything? Look, I don't think anybody on the team wants to play better at his position than Jalen Hurt. I mean, he wants to do well. Uh, you know, you're still talking about a guy that's a freshman. You know, you can't really coach experience. Uh, there's some things that guys just have to learn by doing, and sometimes the best way to learn it is when you make mistakes. And he would probably be the first to tell you he made a couple of mistakes in the first half. Uh, and he'll learn from those and he'll get better. Um, but he's very dedicated. He meets extra. He tries to prepare well for the games. Uh, but sometimes when things don't happen out there on the field exactly like he expects them to, uh, that, that's, that's experience. That's how do you react and respond when things like that happen. So, um, you know, we're pleased with the progress that he's made. We've got a lot of faith, trust, and confidence in him. And we're going to keep working with him to try to get him to improve, to minimize, you know, those things 
so that he can continue to play better. Come over here with Aaron. Uh, Auburn matched up um, Carl Lawson a lot on Jonah Williams. He shut him out. I just wonder what you thought of his play this year. He seems to have played beyond his years. Jonah's played very well for us all year long. Um, and I thought that both tackles really played well in the last game. I thought our offensive line, even though we had trouble blocking Montrevious at times inside, um, who's a really, really good player, um, did a really good job in this game, especially in the second half. We started to, you know, finish things a little bit better, be able to run the ball a little bit better, which, you know, when that happens, it takes a little bit off the quarterback, which is really a good thing for us. Back to Cecil. Coach, you had to adjust the secondary on the fly when Terry <coughs> was, was ejected from the game. How did the guys respond? How did you sort of <coughs> do that? And did you talk about some of the younger players back there that <coughs> developed? Well, when Tony went out, we just we moved Minka back in. And Tony's the next guy up at safety who's played a lot, you know, all year at dime and, you know, some in nickel. So uh, Minka just has a hard time being able to practice safety and start too, uh, which he hasn't been able to do a lot of. But his experience allowed him to do it. I did a very good job, and those guys did a good job. And we ended up playing six defensive backs. Um, you know, that, that's that's where we get a little bit, you know, somebody that we put in the game does not have a lot of experience. But Deontay Thompson did a good job for what he had to do in the game um, and did a good job of executing what he was supposed to do and communicated well, and we didn't have any, you know, real mistakes. Uh, that were costly, you know, in that circumstance. Marlon went out, Levi Wallace went in the game and you know, did a good job as well. Um, had a cover, cover, couple coverage opportunities where he did a nice job of covering the guy. So, um, you know, I was pleased with the way those guys stepped up. Come back over here to Tony. In your opinion, what's behind your, su your success in stopping the, the big plays on, on defense, limiting, you know, big plays from the line of scrimmage? Well, like you could say we eliminated the big play runs uh, in the last game, but they hit a couple big play passes on us, and um, I think we always want to eliminate those because um, you know big plays are you know, something that you know if you if you don't give up big plays um, and you're hard to score against in the red area, um, then you know it makes it more difficult for the other team. They have to sustain. Uh, but a couple of times Auburn was able to move the ball on us last week. We did give up big plays, and that's something that we always harp on. And um, some tough play action play passes because we were playing to stop the run. Uh, but we have to do a better job of responding to those. And we're going to see some of the same types of things this week. So our players are going to have to do a good job uh, in that regard, recognizing read and run pass, especially off the hard play action pass. Back here to Dennis. Nick, you've got three players on defense that I can count that are up for national awards this year. It's kind of an anomaly out there, but why don't you think Alabama's ever won a national defensive player of the year before? I really can't answer that. I haven't given a lot of thought. I really can't answer it. We've had some really good defensive players here that um, I think we had somebody win the Butkus, but um, I think we have some very deserving guys on our team that have been very productive and they've been really good team players this year, whether it's you know, Jonathan Allen, <coughs> Ruben Foster, um, you know, Ryan Anderson. I mean, all those guys have played extremely well for us and has had they've had great production. Hard for me to compare their performance to other players because I don't see them play all the time. But I know those guys have done as much for our team as uh, just about anyone could expect. And I think whether it's recognizing the awards or whatever it is, that's that's pretty much all you can expect from a guy. Do you feel like a parent who has to choose your favorite child? You know, it's like I love all of them equally. If somebody asked you who your best player is, you'd be hard pressing. Well, it was kind of hard pressed for me to just say those three guys. You know, based <laughs> on what some of the other guys have done to contribute as well. So um, I think we take a lot of pride here in, in playing team defense. I, I think that our guys do not take chances and <coughs> do things to try to make plays that actually can give up plays. Um, and I, I think that 
all of them have quite a bit of respect for each other, and you know I certainly feel the same way about that. And as a coach, you just want to try to give them the best opportunity to put them in the best position so they can make plays and have production, and hopefully, you know that'll be the case moving forward. Up front here with Dwayne. Coach, Sean Dion is second on the team at tackle. Did you expect him to have this kind of season going in? Um, you know, we have a lot of confidence in Sean Dion Hamilton. He's a good player. He's very instinctive. Uh, he's one of those guys you can certainly depend on to uh, make the right choice, the right decision, uh, be in the right place relative to what his responsibility is. And um, It's not surprising to me that he's had the production that he's had. You guys always ask me these expectation questions. I, I don't really have expectations. I don't go into the year thinking, well, this guy makes this many tackles. You know, those are results. You know, my goal for players is can we get them to play as well as they can play, uh, put them in the right positions, and get them to be disciplined to do their job. And Sean Dion's probably done that as well as anybody on our defense. Right here with Mark. <coughs> I just want to ask what you've seen from uh, Florida's secondary, particularly their two corners in Tabor and Wilson. Well, they're very good. Their entire defense is very good, but the two corners, they play a lot of man-to-man, -man, and those guys have done a really good job of um, setting people you know, down and limiting options that you have, and, um, but they have you know, good players in safety, and uh, they do a good job of rushing. Uh, so you know, this is a really, really good defensive team. And, um, we're going to have to do a great job against them. Come over here to Ben. You've had a couple of games recently where the offense was kind of able to burn a lot of clock at the end to kind of grind the game down. Do you feel like your four-minute offense, your ball control offense, is, is one of your strengths? Well, it certainly was in a couple of games this year, and it certainly was Saturday. Take nine minutes off the clock and 61 yards. Uh, I think that's what you want to be able to do so that you minimize the opportunities that the other team gets. Uh, to be able to come back on you in the game. Um, and I think that was a, an outstanding job by our offense and a uh, very good plan offensively as well to be able to get that done. Last two, Ken and then Alex. <coughs> Saw a little bit of everything from our Darius Stewart again. Would you talk about his, his role uh, on the offense, not just on the field, but, but off of it as well? Well, our Darius is a very competitive guy. Um, we certainly want to get him the ball and get him touches in the game because he will make plays. Um, and I think, you know, this last game especially, he was very, very productive. Um, we also want to do the same with Calvin Ridley. Um, and our, our Darius is, um, I think, sets a great example with his competitive spirit in terms of how he goes about, um, you know, what he does as a football player. And, we certainly have a lot of respect, faith, trust, and confidence in him. Um, what you don't see is what a great job he does blocking uh, and uh, the toughness that he plays with and the competitive spirit that he has. So um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for that guy. Finish up right here. This is a quick one. You said yesterday on the teleconference you hadn't spoke to the uh, uh, train, trainers about Marlon. Do you have an update on him yet? Yeah, he, he, he's probably going to. We'll take it easy with him for today, for at least a, a little 